And it was here that the most notorious highwayman in history, Dick Turpin, would meet his end. York Castle has witnessed religious persecution, torture, execution, and all-out war. But the English Civil War in the 17th century was the last military action the castle saw. By the end of the conflict, its fighting days were over, and its main use was now as a jail. Criminals were held in cells within the wall, which once encircled the broad area of the castle in front of the central tower. They were waiting for travelling judges to come and hear their cases, but that only happened twice a year. Terrible prison conditions, no heat, poor food, dirty cells, meant that many of them died here still waiting for justice. But plans were in place to bring the whole complex up to date. The old medieval buildings in front of the castle were demolished and a new purpose-built prison was opened in 1705. This prison was one of the first in Britain designed to house both male and female prisoners. Its most famous inmate was one of the most celebrated outlaws in English history. In 1738, Dick Turpin, a notorious gangster and highwayman, shot and killed a man in London and fled to Yorkshire to escape the law. But later that year, he was arrested, rather bizarrely, for shooting someone's chickens. Inquiries soon connected him to a string of local horse thefts, and he was imprisoned at York Castle. This is the cell that Richard Turpin was held in before his trial for horse theft in 1739. Now, at first, the authorities at York Castle didn't know that he was Turpin. They thought he was a man called John Parman, and they only realised their mistake when Turpin's old school teacher, back in Essex, recognised his handwriting on a letter he'd sent to his brother-in-law, and the school teacher travelled north to York to identify Turpin and claim a £200 reward. Over the years, many myths have grown up around him. But who was the real Dick Turpin? In the popular fiction of the day, Turpin was described as a brave, heroic and chivalrous character, a knight of the road with a spirit of devotion to the fair sex, a sort of Robin Hood character. But was this really true? Historian Catherine Pryor has studied the man behind the legend. Turpin's crimes were pretty unpleasant. I mean, highly unpleasant. They're the sort that you'd get headlines screaming in the sun about today. Uh, torture, murder, point blank murder. There's absolutely no evidence that Turpin gave anything to anybody else. As far as we can establish, he lived for himself. So the idea that he gave to the poor is, is pretty nonsensical. So having Richard Turpin as a prisoner, this was a real boon for York Castle. It was a real boon for the jailer, um, because in those days, jails were commercial enterprises. They weren't um, run by the state. And you got your money back from the fees that you levied on the people who were in the jail. It was a form of accommodation. It was like you paid for your accommodation while you waited to be tried or waited to be executed. And Richard Turpin lived it up um, rather grandly while he was here. There was a lot of bribery, um, and he paid to have a lot of things brought him, a lot of wine, fine food, and people paid to come and see him. I mean, it was a sort of like a zoo, really. In the 18th century, horse theft was a capital crime. So when Turpin was found guilty, there was only one sentence. Death. A couple of days before he died, he shelled out some money and got a new frock coat and new shoes. And he paid five men to be his mourners or pallbearers. He was seen to be quite calm going up. There's an account saying that his right leg wobbled a bit and he slapped it down very firmly and climbed the ladder in a manly fashion. And then he stayed talking with the 
chap who was going to pull the ladder away for about half an hour. Everyone, it's described now as bravado, but you sort of think he was probably hoping maybe, maybe there'll be a last minute reprieve, um, but there wasn't. And so the, the ladder was pulled away and he died. 